Hello and welcome to the Tech Lunch Podcast, where we encourage our listeners to learn something new about tech every week. This can range from learning about new and exciting te- applications to the advancements in coding and technology. If you are always learning, you will always be a step above the rest. Take the time during lunch or during a break to listen and learn, kind of like a lunch and learn, but for the years. This podcast will open the listeners' ears to new and exciting technologies they may have not been purviewed to in the past. These topics will range from manufacturing technologies to data collection technologies and everything in between. Hello, I'm Nick. Hey, I'm John. Hello, I'm Ed. And, you know, this week we're going to continue down uh, and talk about some, some more 3D printing stuff, you know, now that we got Ed back. Um, you know, last week we kind of touched on the, the Raspberry Pi and, you know, how we use it, you know, with our printers and stuff like that. And, you know, I'm actually going to propose a question from last week real quick before we jump into this week's conversation. Because, Ed, you weren't here to have that conversation with us. Okay. Um, Raspberry Pi. Okay. How do you currently use it in your current setup? Or are you, how you're how are you going to use it if you haven't implemented one already? So my uh, implementation will be a Pico uh, W, and uh, it basically has wireless uh, capability. So my uh, ideal is to uh, not have to use the SD card. I'm gonna set up a server, uh, wirelessly connect those two, and I can pull everything from those, uh, or try to pull those from. There. We'll see how it works out, but I think that that works better because I can have a repository and pull from a repository. Um, maybe even write some scripts on the server side that can uh, facilitate if I want to run uh, different prints so that I don't have to stop and start. One print stops, another one starts. We'll see how that mm-hmm. goes. You know, easy to say, hard to do, but you know, always up for a challenge. Yeah, that'd, that'd definitely be interesting. Yeah. And the thing is, if you did, if you went to like you know Clipper. Or something like that, where you get main sale, you know, it opens up all of your ports and stuff like that, okay. and you know, it gives you um, all your configuration, like what I use with, with with my main sale and stuff like that, and also, you know, main sale is the you know the OS backside of it. However, you know, when you're talking about, um, you know, Moonraker and stuff like that, Moonraker opens up all the APIs. So it pretty much turns your bit your, your your printer into a big API machine. Mm-hmm. So, which is nice actually. Yeah, and I Get shouldn't have looked at it because now I have to do a bunch of updates. Yep. Um, Great. Yeah, I just updated my my stuff. Up. Um, so you know, it's it seems like one of those things. It looks like there's a Clipper update, but so well now we got your side of the story. Yeah, it's it's nice to hear because, like, and, and we even got down to you know talking about which which. Um, Pi we bought the uh, Raspberry Pi we have because like we all honestly we all have three different ones now we yep. would, would have three different ones in that situation and it, it just shows you the versatility that a, a Pi brings and the compatibility that you could have with a with a three D printer yep. so and eventually we'll all go to you know well some of us will try those uh, the orange pies and orange oh, pie zeros and stuff like that. Banana pie We're looking at too. a price point of four <laughs> bucks for a regular pie, and the new pie W is six bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and, and so then, you're talking a minimal investment if you can get everything to work to add to your. And it's all that the uh, form factor is small, mm-hmm. so you can actually actually add it inside because it's enough room inside to actually add it to there. Yeah. yeah. That's not bad. And you know, with the with the orange pies, they have the smaller micro. Orange pies, which is pretty much what what we find out the other day was like a Raspberry Pi three, you know, knockoff, mm-hmm. um, yeah. just in a small form factor, and you're talking probably about the size of a quarter doll, uh, you know, mm-hmm. but it had, um, you know, all the different oper- openings on it that you needed. Yeah, it had Wi-Fi on it. It had you know a sixty four bit motherboard on board, mm-hmm. you know, for something the size of a silver dollar. Yeah, yeah. you know, and it, it's just it's it's one of those things. You know, runs ARM. And which is which is extremely rare, something that size, you know. And at that price point, it's less than you know less than six bucks, mm-hmm. you know. But then again, you're having to you know wait for it to come over from China, yeah. um, you know, from through what AliExpress we found. <laughs> yeah. Because um, there's really no not a whole lot of U.S. But based. But I think they all yeah. basically um, right now being developed in China. Yeah. <laughs> there, well, there's no really U.S. based yeah. um, uh, uh, companies selling. No. Yeah. So you know you can get them on Amazon. 
But but those are coming. Yeah, I think, resellers are. Yeah, I think those no are actually coming out of uh, the UK or yeah. coming yeah. out of uh, China, like yeah. I said. And you know the thing is, as soon as we might get into that front that firm later, but we'll you know yeah. we'll talk about that at a different well, date. But I guess we better get to this week's okay. topic before we get too down that rabbit hole. Yeah, we'll talk about pies later. Yeah, we'll talk about that thing all day long. Um, you know, and this this week's filament, it, 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 this this week's filament, um, you know, brought to you by the letter <laughs> F. L A. You know, and, and you know, it's uh, we're gonna be talking about filament. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's you know next thing we're going Sesame Street. You know, yeah. this week's uh, episode is brought to you by the letter F for <laughs> filament. Yeah. P for PLA, <laughs> you know, and then we're gonna be in this whole freaking debacle all over again. Yeah, you know, it's just one of those things. Um, so, you know, I guess the the big thing to propose the question, you know, what's your favorite filament? You know, it's in why. You know that that'd probably be a good starting point Some to where we're at. And stuff um, before we get into how do you actually choose your filament that you're going to use for what project you're gonna jump on. Yeah. Um, and is there really any special considerations? Because you got these guys that are buying, you know, these hundred dollar printers, two hundred dollar, not even two hundred dollar printers at this point, you know, that aren't enders, that aren't, you know, any of those. They're you know, they're, you're paying some decent money for some of these machines out there, and some of them honestly are really, really, really nice for what you pay for. Mm-hmm. However, you may not have an all metal hot end on it. Or something like that, where you can run ABS or yeah. you know ASA or you know any of that stuff, or dual gear and straight to be able to run, you know TPU or yeah. depending on what well, wiggly version of TPU you want to deal with, because there's like eight. A little flexible. You, I mean, the the thing is, is like you got to know what you, you're getting in, in the package with the printer too. So like, if if you don't have those those units, those extruders, hot ends that can handle those higher temperatures. I guess it kind of goes back to f- before we get to even that point is is know your filament. Like before you purchase a filament, like know the the MSDS forms don't necessarily come with every spool, mm-hmm. but but this is still plastic and you're, you're heating it to temperatures where it's essentially you know melting it. You should you should be a little bit aware <laughs> of what you're doing, right? I mean, yeah. I feel like that's only fair to say. Yeah, but but on the on the, the same point. Yeah, like so. So when you think about it, it should be common sense. But it, it really, most people aren't thinking about it like that. They're like, well, everybody's doing it, and, and and they're not getting the issues. So why should I really care about that? Now, here's the reason. Here's the reason why you should care about what you print. Is I can print a let's just say for you know lack of an example, a hammer, right? I can print a hammer out of PLA. I can print a hammer out of PETG. I can print a hammer out of TPU. They're all going to be different effects, right? Mm-hmm. The first hammer is probably going to shatter because it's brittle. The second one may do a little bit better, but it's going to snap at some point. It, it, that one's the one that when it breaks, it doesn't clean snap more or always. It Unless it's a layer separation, it doesn't clean snap. If you're breaking it against the layer, it's bending, not breaking, mm, if right. that makes sense. It's absorbing it to a certain point. And then TPU, like that thing's not going to work. you got a rubber mallet. <laughs> Which so, could be something that you need. Well, I, and then, I mean, I'll, I'll let you go and, and, and kind of like what your thoughts on this are. Is like, I, I, I even want to go deeper in that. Not all PLA is the same. Not all no. PETG is the same. Not all TPU is the same. Fundamentally, yes, the material it's made out, is the, made out of is the same. But they may have different print, like various print effects, quality, you know, dimensional accuracy differences. Like, yeah. honestly, I've gotten two different TPU prints, the same model, and I use two different spools, and they are so different. <laughs> so, well, like you were saying, like, uh, so you say PLA. PLA is actually stronger than ABS, but mm-hmm. ABS temperature range is better than PLA. Yeah. ABS, far as uh, exposure to UV, yeah. is better. But when I look at, like, when, when we start talking about filament, the thing I think about is you, you got basically three levels of 3D printing. You got beginner, you got intermediate, and you got advanced. Mm-hmm. So we got all three uh, types at the table. Mm-hmm. So from my point of view, when I pick a filament, I pick the filament so that I, one, I can test that filament through every test that I can run. Every benchy, every tower, every temperature, and then verify that, 
hey, this is performing over this. Yeah. All PLA, whether it's different types, should at some range have a curve. Have a curve. Maybe some forms of PLA, yeah. which have a different formulation, could perform better than others. But for the most part, those temperature ranges are going to be the same. Yeah. Or about the same. Yeah, roughly. Ru- so your print you know, should be roughly, or it was, the print should respond the same no matter how many times you print it. Right? If the bed is level, if okay. you, so we're saying that everything is perfect. Environment's identical. Yeah. Maybe the PLA is different formulation wise. There's no moisture. Your environmental so with, factors are environmental much factors accounted for. Yeah. But I should be able to take that PLA and say, hey, when I print the benchy, I do this each each spool. Yeah. Each spool you should you should run. My thinking is you should run some tests or battery tests to verify what's the um, response of that material over all those type of tests. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then from that, you know the curve for that that particular right. filament. And you do it for each filament. Now, it's just like an artist has a palette. The 3D printer or the guy that's running the 3D printer has a palette, too. And which, now I'll say this, you know, on that. And this is kind of where, and I'll let you get back to your point. Um, but I want to tack on to one thing. Um, you know, Super Slicer and Prusa Slicer. Sounds kind of, you know, fishy, but you no, know, they're pretty much the same thing. Um, give you the ability to save your settings, your print settings, mm-hmm. as a filament setting on the right side, on, on, on yeah. when you choose it from the drop down. Mm-hmm. So you should, you know, the thing is, if you do that, like what Ed's saying, if you, when you test your filament, so like that, download Prusa Slicer, Super Slicer, depending on what uh, um, uh, firmware you're using, and, you know, jot all that out. You know, you know get, your, get your temperature curves set up inside your slicer, so you don't have to go looking for it. You just go, okay, cool, I'm printing this company today. Uh, but there's where the devil, a devil's advocate, you know, kind of lies and wait. Not all filament from the same company are identical. Yeah. So that's when you print one and go, okay, cool, this is what I was before. You print another one of the same exact print. See where you're at. Yeah, that's, that's all part of the curve. That's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Like e- even like each spool of filament, even if it's the same filament from the same company, is is never going to be exactly the same. The formula, the formula, the formula will be close, but each batch could be different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I've seen it different from layer to layer. E- even that, it's a curve. Yeah. Even if I'm going layer to layer, I can mathematically, scientifically curve, say, hey, <clears throat> this material is going to perform this way over. These amount. Right. If I run ten spools of this, then I have a, a range. I have a curve. It's not to say that the curve won't change, but I have a curve. Nonetheless, I can take that curve and uh, analyze that curve compared to adding new things to the curve. Mm-hmm. So if I run a hundred spools of that that material, I'm going to find some empirical data that says, "Hey, yeah. this is what their this is what their formula does." Right. Yeah. Which makes sense. I mean, from a from a not we're, we're talking about from a novice point of view, trying to understand. How the filament work, how the printer works, and how you can make those two things work together. Yeah. Instead of hey, I'm gonna jump to uh, straight to intermediate or advanced topics. If you mm-hmm. if if you as a, as a person that does uh, tile work, if you don't know how to lay the, the the base, how are you gonna start laying tiles? Yeah, your tiles are gonna be off. Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't know the basic of 3D printing, I advise that you understand these yeah. topics before you try to go to intermediate. Hey, I want to yeah. switch to another slicer. Hey, I want to switch to another uh, firmware. You need to understand basic 3D printing first as a beginner before you jump into intermediate and advanced topics. Yeah. yeah. And and you're not going to learn anything if you just copy what somebody else is doing. Right. Yeah, you gotta you gotta learn how to to walk or crawl before you can run. I mean, I agree because like. Same thing that you're talking about, you know, getting your, you know, tried and true tests, like, like, consistent, like, and consistency, that's kind of a word that rings true, like, in my printing experiences, is, like, there's even one brand that, like, if you asked me, what brand should I get, like, I've got one spool, one company, that I, every single time I get their spool, when I have the, the same settings dialed in, it's repeatability is just second to none yeah. and and i mean that's 3d solutech for me like and that's a company that that's what like, you're running in the background right now yeah and that's and that's what i'm running at home right now like that's it's it's the it's 
the amount that I have to dry it to, to, to make sure the moisture is not there anymore anymore and, and the quality of the print like through and through each and every time is identical mm -hmm. yeah I want that I want that and, and like as as a I don't want to say just a scientist as a maker or as a tinkerer like that's something that we I mean you would like to rely on something because we're oftentimes you know, working on something that we have no idea what it is. So, like, right. relying on something to behave a certain way will help us kind of in the other the other process, kind of our project, if you will, that we're working on. So, if I can get a reliable print, okay, well that, that print broke with this because I tried that thing. Okay, well, I'll just hit print and come back in a couple hours and I'll get another one. We'll try it again, right? That's that's kind of the, the idea what I want behind, like, what, what film and I choose and and then it does get a little bit hard to kind of stray away from like you know tried and true but you should you should kind of keep your you know keep your mind open because like you get to those filaments like like wood PLA like PLA plus T glaze mm -hmm. like uh, wood um, uh, wood marbles and and like even they got flecks of carbon fiber and and, yeah. and iron and copper and stuff mm -hmm. so like you can get to those points but you got to also understand the 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 natural like qualities of it like if you're getting a carbon fiber um like laced filament pet g or whatever uh it's gonna tear up your nozzle yeah, like a CFR yeah. one. you better it, know the consequences it, of using it's, it's gonna material. tear up your nozzle so yeah. your nozzle is like cons the consumable uh, that is your nozzle you better have had a hot end that can take it like a hardened steel or even in some cases they have uh sapphire tip mm -hmm. uh nozzles I don't know if they get the diamond tip. I'm gonna be honest with you. Once they put a single nozzle at like a hundred and something dollars, I was like, I think I'm gonna stop looking now because I'm gonna get depressed. Well, the sapphire, the <laughs> yeah, sapphire right. makes this, uh, sense because that's what they use in most movements. Yeah, it is the movement that they. It is the mechanism that they use it's for so as precise, yeah. Yeah. precise right. and and wear. Yeah, it takes okay. a lot to wear. I mean, of course, you you don't want to do things out of diamond because of the expense. Yeah. So the next best thing is sapphire. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. You know, it's like I, I started, you know, this whole three D printing, you know, journey, you know, a couple of years ago. You know, buying three D printing filament from uh, Michaels. Um, I, no, Joanne Fabrics. I wish you could still do that. You know. Oh yeah, me too. And the thing is, is their filament was not bad. It was, you know, it was decent filament for what it was. You know, they sold 3D printers there and all the other stuff, but we ran a, you know, Ender 3 uh, Pro, mm -hmm. you know, for a while. And then, you know, I went, you know, took a couple, took a, a, year, a couple years off, you know, doing any type of 3D printing and stuff like that. And then, as you can probably hear in the background, <laughs> you know, back into it again. Yeah, I know. Um, but, and I, I jumped in, you know, ironically, full force, you know, using Pet G, you yeah. know. It was cheap. It's kind of like a, it was a hard step into. Like it's a little bit like punishing. I'd yeah. Say. Oh yeah. Definitely. Is, and you figure out what you did wrong pretty quickly. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing: making the transition back to PLA was not easy. Um, it, it's it, it's kind of like de-learning a, a bunch of stuff to get back to, yeah. you know, where you're at for you know, say a PLA instance. But I only went to a Pet G. Too, yeah. yeah. The only reason I went to uh, a Pet G is because it was impact resistant and stuff that I was doing before. Mm -hmm. And the, um, like, for instance, the, the print quality that we had a couple years ago wasn't all, I can say that great. Mm. Sorry. Um, you know, it was not all that great. You know, you had some issues in there with, you know, wording and stuff like that when you printed out like that. Like, I did my dad, you know, a couple coasters out of yeah. PLA, and they're still at the house. Yeah. Um, out of black PLA. Eventually, I'll redo them out of the uh, ABS I got in the corner. Yeah. Um, you know, coasters out of ABS. Kind of staring at you in the corner. You're just waiting to, waiting to try it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That and the TPU you brought me, but I have to go get another uh, dual gear extruder yeah, yeah, for that yeah. one to work. Um, so, you know, that's... I wanted to trip him up, but he hadn't tried it yet. No, nope, because see. I know, I know what I gotta buy first, <laughs> we get to work. Um, yeah. so I'll probably try, you know, knowing my luck, I'll probably try that freaking uh, ABS before I try anything else. Well, yeah, see, and that's the thing too. So, um, that's, that's a good point that you make. Like, you, you, you jumped in 
almost off the deep end, some would say, but you still need to kind of reel her back and kind of see what, see how it works. A lot of people need to start with PLA. A lot yeah. of people should start with PLA because it, it's going to get you your fundamentals. Like if you're wanting to print something, like okay, I'm I'm ready to print. How do I print? Oh well, yeah, mm-hmm. this is a long story. Now you've started down the rabbit hole because you could do the same thing today, and ten minutes later, it's not gonna work because you know the properties of physics. Like you're heating a a, a metal plate up to 60, 70, 80 degrees Celsius, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yep. There's no way that that's going to be identical dimensions to what you had it when you first started. So you need to, and also, like, yeah, I mean, I'm a wonderful example, actually, and you can add, tell me about your first print bed. Like, yep, it shit, will I, take mm. some of it with it. Like, Ooh. your nozzle, either your, mm. your, your nozzle's going to rub on there, and yeah. one of them, the print bed or the nozzle's going to win. It, can't say, it will not be both of them. <laughs> yep, I clogged a well, printer. I clogged both a, of them, your whole printer's down. <laughs> I, I clogged a, a, a print head yeah. and destroyed a nozzle. Yeah. With, I mean, well, not cl- I mean, clogged a nozzle and destroyed a print bed. Yeah. Probably within the first couple months of owning the print, owning this printer. But see, that's, that's, and that's what we talk about the, the the pain, like. Right. But you you take the step back. Oh, okay. Well, my print bed wasn't great for the print, or for the, for the filament I'm using. Yeah, readjust. My my, my level there. wasn't right. But even going into PLA, like say say now you've got PLA down, like and and, and Ed, you could probably be like a. Uh, you, um, give like a, I guess an OT side of this is like a, a first time you're experiencing a process, right? You got the process and you're like, mm, nailed it, repeatable. Every single time I get the same results. Give it 10 this minutes, little change. Well, yeah, okay, first off, give it 10 <laughs> minutes, change. You know, like the weather here, give it 10 minutes, it'll stop raining, I promise. <laughs> yeah. um, but but you know, when too. you go from PLA to pet G, so let's say you're quote unquote taking like a step up or a level up that if you don't properly clean your print bed too, it's not going to stick even if it's level. Yeah. Because PLA has this little oil that you can't really see. Just kind of how you can't see the oil all the time on like your skin or mm-hmm. yep. your hands, your fingers. It's an acid. Like, that's why it's, why it's the... Yeah, exactly. There's a residue. Now that residue is not going to allow your pet G to stick the next time you try to put that layer yeah. on there. And if you don't know that, then you're going to waste your time and beat, and beat your head against the wall. So mm-hmm. that's like know your filament. That's for alcohol. Clean it that way. That and you know, like we, a lot of us. Huh? I was gonna say I've I've even gone to the like the bathroom with like or the the kitchen sink with like the scrub brush and some Dawn or Dove. Yeah. Right. Um, Here's the but, thing with, with all this. With, with everything we're saying. Here's the thing from from my point of view. Mm-hmm. When I look at it, when I look at it, hey, this failed. I stopped it. Well, yeah. I'm not. I guess I'm different because like when I do things or try to build something and it doesn't work. Yeah. I figure out why. It's a why. Like, yeah. it's it's changing every 10 minutes because something's changed. Yeah. What's changed? And for me, that's why I say as a beginner, that's why it's important as a beginner, you learn what those things are and what those changes are. Yeah. Everybody wants something to just print and be able to say, hey, I printed something. Be nice to print. Well, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll never stop wanting it. So if you, yeah. if you want that, then like the guy that goes to the golf club and buys the $800 putter, uh, that uh, you know, help him with, or the club that help him get a better stroke. Yeah. Well, he's not working on his technique. He just bought something to make him do something quicker. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So if you want, if your if your thing is, is you just want to print stuff and you don't want to learn, and you just I just want to print widgets. Well, fine. Go buy a Prusa. Don't waste your time on nothing else but a Prusa. Go straight yeah. to Prusa, and it'll do most of the work for you. Don't buy mm-hmm. anything else because you're gonna have to learn. Period. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Oh yeah, you, don't, you pay for what you get. Dust if you don't. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I agree. I agree. Um, the Prusa, you know, to to the credit to that, you know, Joseph Prusa's credit, is they've got a printer that's like, you know, doesn't matter exactly all the time what the filament is. Repeatability on point every single time. Yeah. And it, the thing is, it's it's one of those where it's every single upgrade that you're gonna put on a normal printer. He's just tree built the darn thing to run with it, you know. And so you know you don't get the the fun of upgrading and stuff like that. And you know that's kind of also when you're talking about like filaments for that matter, mm-hmm. is you know certain upgrades pair better with certain filaments. Yeah. Um. Then some others do, for instance. Um. If you think about it, you got 
the enclosures. Enclosures are great, you know, all around the board. However, you're, they're really used for, you know, um, uh, some higher temperature filaments. And even with a higher temperature, sometimes you induce what you know um, uh, moisture in the air, so it's inducing like a, like a fog, yeah. you know, inside of there that could cause damage to like PLA and you know and other ones. You know, you got those out there, but you know that's here nor there, especially if you're on an open top. If you're on an open top, you don't really have to worry about the fogging and the yeah. moisture buildup like you would in a, in a fully enclosed uh, like Core X Y with an, yeah. with elevated sides on it. You know, like the I think it's the Veroni or Veron, Voron. Um, which those things are. If you look at those things, they're awesome. Um, so, but you know, it's here nor there. It's like you got the high, all metal hot end. Those those work great for you know higher level, higher yeah. temp processes. Yeah. You know, dual gear extruders. You need those for your TPUs and stuff like that. And your more spongy filament that your single gear may argue, not grab. I would argue if you run any type of filament, you won't dual. Yeah, dual, dual gear is better, um, honestly. Like, and especially if you're doing dual gear direct, direct yeah, drive. direct drive, yeah. definitely. If you're if you're at a point where it's direct drive, the idea becomes I'm pulling the filament instead of pushing the filament through, and um, you know that that whole idea is it's just more efficient. Yep, more efficient. Now you might create some drag, but like the same kind of like, what if you get an obstruction if you're pushing the filament? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you run into similar problems, but it's there's there's just a way about it that, that's just more efficient. That's you know And that, that's probably, you know, what I'm going to mm -hmm. next eventually, I guess you'd say. Is a direct drive. Um, yeah, and that kinda that kinda reminds me actually when you're talking about the, the, the uh moisture and, and filament like that is, is like you you don't realize how much like this so so pet G and some of the other plastics like that they like they like the moisture. They absorb the moisture, and yeah, it's not wet to the touch. And like if you grab it, you're like, oh, this filament's dry. Mm -hmm. But when you get some prints, you'll get stringage, like you'll get a, a bunch of over extrusions, a whole lot of defects, and and you're gonna wonder what it is. And and to me, it's it's a, it's the moisture. If your filament's been out for you know weeks at a time, not printing, and mm -hmm. it's sitting on the spool ready to get you know ready to print. Yeah, you're probably gonna need to want to take that off of there and and put it in a like a food dehydrator at a low temperature, um, or you know very very low temperature. Now I say this again, very low temperature. Don't put it in your oven. Very low temperature. Do temp not put it in your <laughs> oven. Oh, you mean you don't want a plastic soup? <laughs> plastic it's dangerous, cake? but pe people do. People have been putting them in the ovens if they don't have anything else. But it, the the thing Those is, are is like thing itch when it's done. Yeah, I like to me. I'm not going above eighty degrees, and and a lot and some of these ovens they don't even go that low. Yeah. So like I don't I don't like that to be honest with you. Now that's eighty degrees Fahrenheit. So like if you, if you're thinking Celsius, that that's a bit a lot a lot higher, and it will definitely. Um, I'm not thinking about the filament melting itself. I'm thinking about the spool that's on it. Because nowadays they're making the spools out of pure Car cardboard, cardboard yeah. and not plastic like they used to. Yeah. So if you have cardboard spools, do not put those in your oven. Nope. Yeah, don't do that. And then now you can use desiccant or some type of thing to yes. store it in. Yeah. But what my advice or what I, my approach is, and I'm no expert, mm. is a beginner that's done some reading. I'm gonna get me a direct inline heater that directly feeds. Like a dry box into my printer yeah so yeah, i don't have box for that, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I i just pay for it yeah just do the call mm -hmm. sometimes if if you want something nice i said a different way you can buy a yugo or you can buy you know a car that's reliable like a toyota corolla <laughs> or a honda accord you know something that's reliable not flashy but reliable yeah. or you can buy a yugo I was going to be honest with you. I didn't know what a Yugo was. And so <laughs> you don't want to know what a Yugo yeah, exactly. is. <laughs> it's a motorized rickshaw. It was 700 yeah. bucks of no good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll take this right back. <laughs> Get the Pinto out. Huh? But, no, yeah. It's, I mean, the point rings true is, like, you pay for quality. You, you, you pay for quality. Mm -hmm. So Now, the other thing is what you can do is what you're talking about, the, the decadent stuff, mm -hmm. you know, is if you get freaking, you know, uh, the clear boxes. Yeah. You know, if you have open rolls, which if you get into 3D printing, you can have open rolls. You have open rolls. Yeah. It's your top rolls. Um, throw them in that box and get an order. Go to Amazon 
Type in decadent decks. Mm-hmm. Um, you're probably going to buy the thousand. You dump them in there. No. And then when you're ready to use your film, you go in there, you fish it out, mm-hmm. and it should be dry. No. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think, like like what you're saying, that, that makes That's sense. Idea. You know, like, like I... That or what is it? The stuff that you should hang in your kit, in your, um, uh... Um, in your in your closets, but I think it's the same principle. I don't yeah, know. yeah I think it's it's, it's absorbed. Both of them absorbed. Yeah. They yeah. Just it just one is in moisture. In yeah, there. one is in a packet form. One is in a, another form. Yeah, like a tube. Silica or something. Yeah, it's like silica that. based. Yeah. It's so the silica will attract the moisture. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other thing is, is, if you can't do that immediately after you print, back back, you know, heat your heat your hot end up, mm-hmm. back the filament out. Take that filament and pack that filament up, or or get you a uh, vacuum uh, sealer, a vacuum sealer, yeah. and reseal it. That's actually a great idea with, with the decadent, with some of the de- decadent inside. Yeah, it'll pull it all out. Because so, that's 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 really smart to do, and that's a good habit to have. Because, like, I mean, right now I've probably got about fifteen spools that are half open, half used, mostly used, and they're sitting out in the, or in that box, and. Like, even, even when I look at the new filament that I purchased when it comes in, it, it comes in in a vacuum, quote-unquote, vacuum-sealed bag. Mm-hmm. But I have lots of air in that bag. If there's air in that bag, that is not a vacuum seal. Right. That is not, like, there's moisture in that bag. Right? Yeah. So, for me, I even throw it into the, I have a food dehydrator, which I 3D printed the, the walls to be a little taller to fit the school. Mm-hmm. Toss it in there for a couple hours and, yeah, and you, you, solve that problem. You, you can do that all the time. It all exists in, in one setup on my enclosure with my with my Ender, so it's, I mean, yeah. it's like easy the, to make. Like it, the 3D Solid Tech stuff came through pretty good. Yeah. You know? the stuff, it's maintained. Yeah. The, um, the, the Creality um, ABS isn't bad. You know, yeah. it isn't bad on the seal. Okay. Um, the I can't remember the name of the company that I bought. Like the G Tech or G Tech or something like that. Yeah, G Tech is where I where I bought my um uh pet G from, and so they've held together. I mean, you know, the vacuum is held. Yeah. So, but you know, it doesn't cost very much to go to the store and buy a no. vacuum sealer. No. You know. And, you know. And, and if you're perfect. ambitious enough, why don't you just build you a setup for the spools? You open up a door that seals, and you make yourself a uh, sealed compartment. Yeah. With, like we said, the decadent is is, is right. pretty easy to get. Yeah. You just have you a little drawer that you can pull out the end, or have it where you can stick your hand and pull it out, mm-hmm. and you just stick one. Or if you don't do that, you just seal it. Like you, you, you have an airtight. The- Airtight, airtight area. Right. You, you can use one of the the the, the, the uh, clear plastic boxes. Mm-hmm. You know that you have. You know yeah. that you put Christmas decorations in. Exactly. Um, I'm sure you probably got a thousand of them in your garage yeah. someplace. Um, you know, you put them on there. Put the little rollers in there that you know what John 3D printed for the filament, mm-hmm. and throw you know a couple hundred decadent down there on the bottom. There's and then you can feed it. Then things you can punch yeah. a little hole and feed your filament out of it. So it's tentatively keeping it dry at all times. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And here's another thing. Yeah, I don't know if you've, if yeah. you've seen the bags that people use where they do pack their clothes. Yep. You can actually use those bags the smart seal. with a with a with a vacuum cleaner, and it'll pull a oh, vacuum on them. And you can do multiple in that one thing. Yeah, that's a great idea because like you can it'll, then yeah yeah you can then do maybe packets of four or six yeah yeah and then you use it as you need it. Yeah. yeah, so I'm gonna go home today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get more of the vacuum seal. <laughs> but I'm saying it's easy I got because some filament to put you, away. Because <laughs> you can just basically I got a brand for you down the garage. Yeah. No, serious. And they're not that expensive. Yeah, that's no. actually a great idea. They're pretty affordable. Yeah, that's if you if you can't smart. afford that's the other thing, this is the alternative. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. Now, I mean, you're you're not gonna be able to use it like rolling it out of out of the the no, bag. No, no, no. It's just uh, yeah, it's, it's just, just for storage yeah. purely. Yeah. But that's a great idea to maintain. You know, the life. Of the the filament, right. you know, well, you'll keep moisture additional moisture from going in, yeah. Because whatever moisture it attracted before, oh, it's keeping it. it's it's there. Yeah. <laughs> but you'll keep additional moisture from going in. Out of there. You'll keep it from becoming saturated with moisture. That's true, right? So, and yeah. you can put desk. You can put like Nick said. Just, oh, yeah, yeah. just buy the desk and yeah. put that in there, yeah. and just back and along the And package. then over time, it'll it'll take out whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, so I shouldn't put a rice. Fill the bag with rice. 
You well, can work too. Kid. Because it, it, works, too, yeah. it works like a decimal. If you drop your phone in the dang on tub, take and stick it in rice. My son did the same thing. He was, oh, phone on rice. I give it to him. Well, Stuck yeah. it in rice for about two weeks. Took it back out. Phone works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boys and boys try, but, you know, look at what it does to salt and pepper shakers. Yeah. You know, but, you know, that's here nor there, I guess. You yeah. know, we start talking about foods, a whole, different, a whole different bag of animals. Yeah, we'll be here for a few days. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that, that's the thing. It's like, you know, we start talking, you know, like advanced filaments and stuff like that. I know we're getting close to the end of time. You know, I know we kind of segued from, from the main topic today, you know, beginning good day, you know, whatever. But, you know, we, we're, you know, eventually, you know, I guess you'd call this, you know, three printing your know, filament tips, you know. And then we'll get into more and more, you know, eventually get into your more advanced you know, film that's where you talk about your, you know, your um, ABS and ASA and, you know, all the fun ones. Um, you know, everybody, you know, some people's favorite, polycarbonate. Yeah. You know, when you start printing polycarbonate, you start changing the world. You know, because everybody needs that's it. my next hurdle. Well, is, what, what about yeah. Teflon? Yeah, you start yeah, printing Teflon and you're in an old, different bag of old. That's what I'm saying. Anybody doing Teflon? I don't know. Home, I'm, I'm saying so. hobbyists. Or I don't, know. Hobbyists I don't, know. I don't think so. And the thing is, is now commercial Teflon has a self-lubricating methodology to it, or ability to it. I wonder if 3D printed Teflon does. I don't know. I don't know if anybody's doing it. Yeah, that'd be an interesting thing to find out. Yeah, hey, if you know, you know, if you know anybody doing it, you know, throw a comment down there. You know, catch us on the, you know, over on the YouTube and stuff like that. You know, let us know, yeah. you know, what, what where it is. Send us a link to it. We'll definitely take a look. You know, let y'all know what we think. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm trying if to we're going to say Teflon, this is going to go crazy. What about fiberglass? Ooh. No, no, because just, they got acrylic. They got I, acrylic. I'm just saying, it's yeah. just even saying fiberglass, man. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying like I'm if, working enough if, in the attic. I mean, we're hobbyists. Who, yeah. How many guys want to do something with fiberglass? You know, I don't. Well, maybe I'm guy has a boat or something. You know, or, or I don't yeah. know. You know, maybe somebody wants to print, I, 3D print a boat. I'm trying yeah. to not have flashbacks working in the attic, land for in, um, uh, insulation. <laughs> what do you think? Batman is a pink panther. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, when you say advance, I, I say you know, hey, I'm gonna give you. Advance. Well, let's print a glass while we're at it, okay? <laughs> well, let's, hey, let's, well, let's, let's, let's do the intermediate first. Yeah, yeah then, we'll, 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 we'll aim for intermediate for a little while. Well, we well, said advance. Titanium next. <laughs> yeah. Titanium. <laughs> titanium, tantalium, or whatever it is. Yeah. We're printing nuclear waste. Yeah. Um, you know, we're going to print a nuclear battery that keeps going in circles forever. Yeah. Um, but, you know, hey, that's, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, st- y'all stay tuned for that type of stuff that we're going to get into. Yeah. You know, we're glad y'all can, you can hang out with us. You know, we, we definitely thank you for all the support, you know, through this uh, an interesting journey. Um, you know, from my side, I say thank you. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, I hope y'all have a good night. I'll turn it over to the guys. And uh, so. All right, guys. So I appreciate, you know, all the support as well, always. Um, you know, it's nice, to, it's nice to have people to even talk to about things like this, even, you know. Even if it uh, is just about the things that we've tried and the things that we've failed on, um, I like to think that those are just lessons. So it's not that you've necessarily failed completely. It's it's that like you've just learned a new hurdle, and and kind of how to help somebody else along the way if they hit that same hurdle. So it's all about helping each other out and getting to the you know the main core of, of what we're trying to do, and that's print you know the best that we can. So. Um, like we appreciate listening. We appreciate if you hear anything that you didn't like, that you did like, anything like that. Let us know, and and if you want a whole topic on a, on a certain episode because you didn't like what we said, we. I mean, I don't mind doing research on it. Yeah, I'll carry it. Yeah, so like, bring up something we haven't <clears throat> talked about, and we will research it, and then we can have a we can have a kind of a, a type of talk about it, a podcast mm-hmm. interview or something. So yeah, just. Um, Anything at all, guys. Like we, we're always, you know, open arms, open head, um, open minds, open ears. So, we'll turn it over there. So, uh, I'll just like to follow up with John said. So we fall so we can get up. So uh, if if you're not failing, then you're not trying. So the uh, the whole point of three D printing is yes, it's nice to print things so you can say, hey, I printed this fidget toy or hey, I printed this bust or. I printed this statue, that's nice. But I I would argue that the the adventure is probably the best part of 3D printing. The things that you learn along mm-hmm. the way. Uh, yeah. The things that you thought were <laughs> one way that were proven to be another way. Mm-hmm. So, and, and 
like uh, what John said, I appreciate uh, everybody tuning in. Uh, we welcome any feedback. Um, I would say stay tuned in the future. We would like to do a live show and maybe get some live reactions. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, yeah. But uh, thank you, guys. There you go. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to the Tech at Lunch podcast, where we hope you learn something about tech during your break or during your lunchtime. If you did, please give us a follow to prevent missing future episodes. If you have any ideas or something you want to hear or learn about, please send us a show idea to podcast at vulcanora.com. Hope you have a good rest of the day and continue learning.